Yo, Elliot, what's happening lately is that I'm trying to guess the future based on logic and facts. The reason for this is that I will take different courses of action in my life for different circumstances. My plan for making a living is based on the current peacetime situation. I could make a different plan if I knew wartime was on its way, but having no clue is the problem. The situation with the new government rules seem blurry. There's no certainty like in our parents' era. So I would like to ask you from your point of view and your experience, what do you see coming? Wartime or peacetime? Maybe peacetime for the government rules supporters and wartime for the deniers. I'm also concerned about money. Do you see a collapse, hyperinflation, digital money, total control? Just to clarify, I'm denying everything new that goes against my independence as an individual. Thanks for the support. So this is a very good question. It's something that I wrestle with also. And to make matters worse, you know, I'm kind of, I kind of indulge in fear porn, right? And for good reason, because we're living in a very tumultuous time, weird times right now. And so I've recently come across some very credible information that suggests that a part of the reason why the globalists are making this mad dash to reconstruct society is because they're aware of a global extinction event that is imminent and it's on its way. Uh, something to the effect of a, you know, of 200 mile per hour winds and global flooding and you know, and I think it has something to do with the, the Earth's axis changing and something that's happening within the celestial bodies, something that is expected to happen every 2,400 years, I believe, or 2,600 years. And so th they know this is coming. And as a result, that's why they're pilfering the banks and they're creating all this hyperinflation. They're basically, they're basically, uh, <clears throat> this is like the last raping of humanity before there's a great extinction happening. Is this true? Is it going to happen? I don't know. Should you worry about it? Should you think about it? Should you let it upset you? I don't think so. In situations like this, I refer to some of the old wisdom of my father. And my father doesn't worry about stuff like this. Maybe this is something This is kind of a new age way of thinking for young men like, like us. But my dad's only sentiment is this. I'm prepared for whatever I face and I'll deal with it when it comes. But until then, I'm going to do what I have to do today. And so that makes it very difficult for someone like you or I who want to plan for the future, right? I want to plan for the future. I want to think about grandkids. You might be thinking about having kids. You're thinking about starting your business. I'm trying to think about expanding my business. But at the same time, looming, there's this sense that what am I going to do if this all comes falling down? I listened to a really good uh, podcast, I guess you could say YouTube video. These two Catholic priests were talking, and one of them asked the other one, they were playing pool. He told a story, they were playing pool. And one of them asked the other one while he was playing pool, and he said, hey, what would you do if, uh, you know, because this is, this is often described as the second coming, right? In every, if, you, if you read the Old Testament, there's these cyclical patterns of catastrophe, Right. The great flood, things of this nature. Right. You know, times of, of Noah. And they say we're worse than the days of Noah. So there's these cyclical patterns. And so he says to him, knowing that this is a particular this is a this is a possibility that we may get wiped out. He said, if you found out right now that we were about to be wiped out, what would you do? And, you know, he said he chalked up his cue. And he said, I'll keep on playing pool. Boom. And he hit the ball. Because what are you going to do? What can you do? You have no idea what's going to happen. So you just got to be fit and prepared, agile, ready and willing to pivot when at a moment's notice, right? Prepare yourself, right? Don't, I don't think we should be so naive as to not have basic preps, right? You should have a source of water or you should have water stored. You should have a source of food or food stored, right? Basic stuff like that. Basic prep things like I went through last week when I gave you that list of 50. I gave you a list of 50. Actually, I still have it up here. The tide is turning. 50 steps for survival and victory against the destroyers on naturalnews.com. We went through that last week. I spoke about that. There are certain basic things that you can do that if you didn't do, you'd say you're dumb, right? It's like, you know, why didn't I do that when I could have done it, right? But it doesn't mean revolutionize your whole life or put your whole life on pause or begin making drastic changes in the way you live your life right now. 
not knowing when and what or if anything's going to happen, right? Because then again, a part of it might be just our addiction to fear porn. Our addiction to this idea that, whoa, it's coming, it's coming, right? But we see a lot of we see a lot of tyranny on its way. We don't necessarily see the global catastrophe or the the earth extinction event looming because we don't know and the governments wouldn't tell us. And you know why they wouldn't tell us? Like if they said to us, humanity, you have 200 days left before everyone is wiped off the planet. You know what everybody would do? Quit their jobs, go home, <laughs> right? The whole machine, the whole economic machinery would just come to a screeching halt. So they're going to tell us. Why would they tell us? They want us to keep doing what we're doing until by the time you see that asteroid heading towards us, that's when you find out. Like, wow, that looks like a, a giant fireball headed right towards us. And then you'll find out what, what you're going to do. You find out what you're made of at that point. And you know what I think? If I kind of like play that scenario out in my mind, I see that giant asteroid coming down straight towards me, I'm preparing to see my maker. I will ask for forgiveness for all of my sins. I'll say the sign of the cross. I'll gather my kids. And I say, 10 Hail Marys before we got struck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In other words, you got to prepare yourself spiritually because we're probably going to die. I think that according to these resources, according to these sources, right? I'm not an expert in this stuff and I'm just playing this game, really. I'm, no, I'm nothing more than just a guy like you just playing this game, trying to figure this shit out too. But according to expert and the resources that I, I subscribe to, um, there's going to be an extension level event, something like a billion people being wiped off the planet, right? So if that's going to be the case, I want to get right with God. That's one, of, that's one of the first things I would also encourage you to do. And, you know, I was talking previously about, you know, God asking Zeusa why he wasn't Zeusa. The one thing I would ask God to do is to re reveal to me, Lord, who I really am and what you want from me. And I would do my best to walk in that way. And, of course, the Bible gives us a blueprint for that. You know, a lot of times, you know, people say, oh, I'm waiting for God to say something to me. Or, or these people, I don't believe these people when they say God spoke to me. Um, but we can look at his word. Start reading the Bible, right? Start reading the Bible. Because you know what? If you do survive, you're going to need quite a bit of faith to handle the struggle that we're going to be under. You know, it's going to be famine and disease, right? Even if you, if, if an asteroid strikes this planet and doesn't wipe you out, but it wipes out all of the means by which we live, right? Food, transportation, sanitation, water, right? All this stuff. We're going to be in for quite a ride. Prepare on the outside, but mainly prepare on the inside. Like my dad would say, cross that bridge when you get to it. I'll deal with that when that happens. The only thing I ask for, and this is what my dad ever says he wants. So I don't want, I don't need anything except what? My health and my strength. Give me my health and give me my strength and I will survive another day. I will keep fighting. But he's got a fighting spirit. If you have a fighting spirit, you'll make it. Now, this also gives me pause and makes me think of a conversation I had with a young man not too long ago. And we kind of brought it up too. We talked about it. And that's how these are, are the different generations uh, exhibit different archetypal qualities. And without getting too deep into it, in which generation, you know, I'm Generation X, there's the Millennials, but then there's Gen Z. According to the young man I was having this open, fun conversation with, he asserts that Generation Z or the Gen, you know, you guys who are young right now, 20, um, you're the warrior generation. And he asserts that the reason why you're the warrior generation is because you're the generation that's going to face the hardest times. You know when they say hard times create strong men, right? Hard times create strong men. All you could basically look forward to as a man in this day and age is growing stronger, right? Think about that also too, that maybe in, I, in a way, in a way, I don't know if I'm, I know I'm a masochist, I know I am, but in a way I'm almost, I'm almost looking forward to the pain. I'm almost looking forward to the challenge, right? Um, not, not that I know what's going to happen. I mean, 
I live in Florida. Florida could be underwater. The whole thing could be flooded, and I could just, and that's it. Elliot's gone. That's it. No matter, right? But the prospect of there being a survival scenario where I have to put my my greatest gifts to work in order to survive and save my family and my community, in a way, kind of makes me excited because we, I would be much more useful, and not just me, but all of us as men would feel so much more useful as a man because we'll be needed in that circumstance. Life is so soft that men aren't needed. This is why there's such an attack against masculinity in the world because they don't need us. They don't need us. I was watching this video today with Cher. Remember Cher, right? She was a singer back in the 70s who said that she, that men are a luxury, not a necessity. And her life is all fucked up because she was a retard and her, she had a daughter who ended up becoming a transgender man, right? Because when you have fucked up ideas about gender reality and you have these false ideologies, then you destroy your children. So she ended up with a daughter that turned to a man because she said that men are not needed and so she turned men away from her life. But that's neither here nor there. That's the perversion of this day. And it only gets this perverted. We only get this perverted as a culture when we're decadent. We're decadent because everything is so delicate. It's so easy, so soft, and it's not a place for men. Soft society is not a place for men. Men create a soft society because we love women. You gotta understand that. That if this all get, let's say an asteroid hits the planet and we have to build up out of the ashes, we're gonna struggle our fucking faces off. We're gonna work our faces off. We're gonna struggle for survival. We're gonna rebuild from a remnant and society will emerge once again. But with what in mind? First of all, it's the men that will do it because the women aren't gonna do it. They can't do it. Who's going to be chopping the wood and carrying the water and all that, right? Who's going to be lifting the bodies and burying them? Who's going to do all that? Men. But you know why we'll do it? Women. That's why women are the, are the more powerful gender. Women are the more powerful gender because they put us to good use. But right now, we have no use. They don't need us. So, in a way... Uh, I, I believe I believe the Bible, I believe the allegories in the Bible, I believe the stories in the Bible, I believe that the Bible has tremendous wisdom to share with us if we look at it, not in a literal way, but in a literary way. And you just see after the flood and after these great catastrophes, first of all, God, it, it, God they say that God is wrathful, right? And that he sees us going astray and then creates this chaos to just, just destroy us. Right? Because what do you do in a body that has cancer? You you destroy. I mean, it destroys part of the body. It destroys everything in the body when you take that chemotherapy, but it's to get that goddamn cancer out. So in order to get the cancer out of the planet, God, every few thousand years or whatever, creates these catastrophes that wipes the planet free of all of uh all of these weak people. But at the same time, that is an opportunity for what? For righteousness to emerge, for us to rise up out of it, and for us to become uh, patriarchal again. Because as, as, a, as, a, as a matter of definition, patriarchal means father's rule. And father's rule when men are being men and women are being women. And men are being men when there's something to fight against, something to build up against, right? And we do it because why? Because we love women because we love children, because we love life. Men are the deliverers of love on this planet. And so I, I understand where you're coming from. You're a young man. You're wanting to know what's going to happen. He says, what's happening lately is I'm trying to guess the future based on logic and facts. You can't do it. You can't do it. You're, it's a uh, circle jerk, mental masturbation. You ain't going to figure it out, right? And then you have different scenarios and what if and what if and what if. No, no, nah, 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 nah. Do what you're doing. Do it well. Prep a little bit on the side. Basic shit. Maintain your integrity, right? By not giving in. Doing what you're told in every, every, every turn of the wheel of fortune. And, and be focused on being a resourceful man. Do I have my health and strength? Good. Then I'll be able to deal with it when it comes, dude. 
done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.